Hi, welcome to Scribe Studio. My name is Mark Walker. I'm here with Joshua Solomon. How are you doing? <laughs> Good, Josh. How are you? <laughs> uh, we're here to talk today about a new feature in Scribe Online, which is the native query block that's yes. available presently for SQL Server. Yep, right? absolutely. Yep. So Josh is going to walk us through some examples, give us some tips and tricks, and show us how to use the native query. Now, before we do that, Josh, why don't we just talk a little bit about uh, why you would care about having the native query option? Like, what are some situations that you might have where you'd where you'd want to use it? Well, um, uh, currently our query block uh, allows you to select entire entities um, and then related entities, and it pulls back the entire data set, uh, uh, including all of the fields that you're interested in, or, or all of the fields that belong to those entities. Right. Uh, so a custom query or a native query uh, will allow you to reduce those fields. So if you've got a table with hundreds of uh, fields or, or fields that you don't want included in your data set, you don't need to bring those like back. Like maybe a blob field in there. A blob field is a perfect example of yep. a, a set of data that you don't want uh, to be taking up your space in, uh, in the Scribe Online agent. So. Okay. So why don't we take a look at, uh, maybe, okay. we, maybe you can compare and contrast what the what the, okay. the original query block does uh, so people understand like where it where it comes short and then we can take it over to Absolutely. the native query. Absolutely. Okay. So here I've got an empty solution that we're going to drill into and I've uh, got an agent, uh, a SQL Server agent, and we're going to build an advanced map and uh, we're going to choose our sample ERP connection. And as you're seeing, uh, there's a new block here. This new native query block uh, is, a, is here. Mm -hmm. Now, if you previously had a, uh, a SQL Server connection, this query block probably will not show up uh, until you hit the refresh metadata button. So once you refresh the metadata, it goes back out and it creates metadata for this native query block, and your query block will show up. If you created a brand new connection to SQL Server, would the, would the native query show up? Yeah, brand okay. new brand new connections will will have this block. So we're talking about a previous existing uh, connection, existing SQL okay. Server connections. So um, if I if I pull over my uh, original query block, and we pull up here, as I was just speaking, uh, the entity list uh, allows you to choose individual entities, and you're allowed to choose uh, related entities, but that will bring back entire. Uh, data sets based on a single join, an outer join uh, based on a particular field. Mm -hmm. um, in addition, uh, if we go into our filter criteria, I'm not sure, there we go. Um, we have a filter by individual fields. You have a list of fields to filter by, right. but you can only filter by those fields on the primary entity. On the, you right. can't filter by fields on the related entity, whether it's a parent or Good a child. Point. And so that's, that's another feature that we've uh, allowed uh, in our native query block. Uh, the other things are uh, you have a, a set set of operators uh, that you can filter by. Right. Um, you know, so whatever uh, the native database allows you to filter by you know, whatever operations you, you want to choose. You and you can choose. add multiple filters from this window right here You can with ands and ors between them, but you're sort of restricted to the and and or logic that, exactly. that we make available to you on this screen. Exactly. Right? If I were to add a second field, um, you right. can see that, that my options are to and or or. You can't compare and contrast uh, things like uh, uh, strings and things like that. And even though and, and there's a, it's not quite as accessible uh, in that you don't have the option to put uh, parentheses around your conditions in, in here exactly. as well. Okay. Exactly. So, so a couple of good reasons why you might want to take a look at native so, query. So that uh, kind of points out a, a couple of limitations in the, in the query block. And so uh, the native query is actually quite simple. We drag over an alternate uh, query block for our map and we drill into it and we can give it a label. Uh, so we can change our label. And then we have our query text. Uh, this is uh, no different from uh, the query uh, screen within uh, SQL Server. So you just start typing right, right in there? Exactly. We can, we, can, we can select star from customers, and that's a valid query. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what I like to do is I like to switch over to my SQL Server and actually uh, 
uh, refine my query. You can see here that I have a query that has a subselect um, uh, with an inner join. Mm -hmm. And what I'll do is I'll test my query here in this window, and I can see that I get back a good result set from right. within the Microsoft tool. So uh, at that point, what I like to do is to copy it and move it right over into my query. And now I have a native query that uh, exceeds the limitations of the original query block that we had here. Right, and then one other thing you might want to, well, another good reason, I think, maybe to use the, the other query tool you were showing from SQL Server is it does the syntax highlighting and has Absolutely. some more tools for it's, troubleshooting. It's a, it's a comfortable interface for anyone who's writing SQL. Right, now, so. if you did a test here and there was something wrong with your query that SQL Server didn't like, it would tell you about it. Absolutely, okay. this, this, this will error out and will give you the same error messages that you were seeing in SQL Server. So one thing, when we create our queries, we have to test them. Uh, because what happens here is the entity that you're creating uh, does not exist in your source database. Um, so it's not a customer table. It's not an address table. Right. You're creating a, a virtual entity here, uh -huh. and the metadata for that entity has to be stored by the Scribe Online platform. So our test actually builds that metadata for us. Okay. So that is a requirement each time that you, you uh, create a native query. So that virtual entity uh, has whatever tables you've put together in your join here. Exactly. Right? And so I've just done a successful test. And what I'll do is I'll come over here to the preview pane. And this represents that virtual entity. So I actually have a table here that represents customers and their addresses. Mm -hmm. And so um, you can see that it pulls back uh, that metadata uh, field name and uh, data type. Got it. So, okay. Okay. Um, one more thing to point out here: uh, if uh, if your metadata changes on your source, so let's say if one of your base tables, like your customer table, actually uh, has a new field added to it or taken away from it, mm -hmm. um, uh, that field won't be available here in your custom entity uh, unless you retest. Even if you did a select star. Uh, absolutely, yeah. Okay. If you did a select star, you're, you're going to have to do a test. Okay. And, and that will refresh the metadata that is stored for this particular query. For that virtual entity. For this virtual entity, okay. yes. Okay, so we've tested, we've previewed, and now the data from that query is now available to us. So, a um, couple of more points here. Uh, uh, this entity is, uh, as we've been talking about, it is a virtual entity. Um, it is not updatable. Uh, so it's not a, a, an entity that's updatable. So uh, if we go and we pull in uh, an update block from the source, uh, what we'll see is that that virtual entity uh, does not exist here in our right. list of Yeah, I was going to ask about, it's kind of nice having that query feature and that virtual entity, but you probably, because it's virtual, you probably can't use it in every place you could use a real entity in Scrabble. Online, exactly. Right? Um, and and for the most part, you don't want to update a, uh, it's, it's akin to updating a view in SQL Server. Right. And, and, and that's, that's a, a frowned upon uh, <laughs> uh, thing. It's, okay. it's, it's available, but it's not something that you really want to do. So yeah. that virtual entity is not available for updates or lookups. Okay. Uh, but if you were to choose uh, a create block or an update block on your target, uh, that virtual entity is available to you, uh, not uh, here in the entity, so we'll, we'll well, right because this is the target you're selecting right. from here. Um, so what we'll do is we'll choose a, a, a target entity. And we'll come into our field list, and so that field list on the left is from that virtual entity that was created by yep, your query. Absolutely, you can see we've, we've got a native query field list here. Okay. Um, so if I take um, my create date and I move it over here just to create a link between mm -hmm. my source and my target. When I drill into my formula editor, which we're all familiar with, you'll see that that native query and all of its data set is available okay. here. And it will be available in all of your mappings. Uh, it's simply not available for, for updates and lookups. Okay. Are there any restrictions on the type of query that you can put in and duplicate field names and that type of thing? There are. Um, if we go into our queries, uh, we see that uh, we have a single data set here. And by single data set, what I mean is, is that you do have the opportunity in uh, SQL Server, 
uh, to create uh, a multiple data set query. So here's a query okay. um, that actually brings back two data sets. And if I execute this, we'll see that we have a customer table as well as an address mm -hmm. table. Um, that is uh, not available to us in, in, uh, in the Scribe Online world. That will create a, a double data set which you can't, you can't loop through both of them. It would let you put it in, but if you tested it, it would get thrown out. Absolutely. Okay. So, so that's, that's a limitation. You can only return one data set. Mm -hmm. Now that, uh, uh, in comparison to the original query block where you can return parent and child data right. and loop through them as child blocks right. in the child block uh, uh, processor here, that is where this child block, the for each child, is, is actually not a valid situation. So it's not compatible with that virtual exactly. entity. So this, so this control block, um, although it still appears here, um, it, it doesn't have any meaning when you're using native query mm -hmm. as, as your source. Okay. Um, that control block is, is there and it's available for the, for the normal query block. Okay. So um, I think we've covered most everything. There was one other point, I think, that you were telling me about before we started recording. It was about uh, aliasing your field names. Oh, we yes. about that yet. Absolutely, aliasing. Uh, to go along with the, um, with the concept of uh, single data sets, uh, we all know that when we select and we join tables together, such as customer and contact, that contact is going to be associated with a customer ID. And so that customer ID may show up uh, in both data sets. Okay. So in your join, your customer ID may show up twice. Mm -hmm. um, that uh, uh, creates a, a cyclical uh, join within, within our, our right. product. So you, so can't you have, have to alias uh, duplicate field names. So duplicate field names are not, are not, uh, are not allowed here. That, that's probably a pretty common concept for people who work with, and, with and SQL type databases. It is, yeah. it is. Um, okay. so, and I think that's... All right, great. Josh, right. thanks a lot for spending right. the time with us. Uh, we hope you find that information helpful. Um, thank you for taking time to check out uh, Scribe Studio and join us next time for more information, tips and tricks from our Scribe experts.